solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So yes, ma'am. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay. Kristen Marie McCall. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, could you please tell the jury where you're currently employed and what your role is there? Um, I work for Greenwood County Department of Public Safety, the Forensics Division. Okay. And, and what specifically do you do for the Forensics Division? I work in drug analysis. Okay. And could you break down a little bit about what is drug analysis? I, I know for some of us, it, but what is drug analysis? So in my job, I'm a um, forensic chemist. So officers may pull a suspect over or a arrive on a scene and there's suspected drugs there. So they collect them from uh, the suspect and then they submit them for property and evidence for analysis. Sometimes on the TV shows, you may see that they do a chemical color test and then they put it on top of the hood. Well, that's giving them an indication of what they're looking at. But a problem is sometimes I can give false positives, such as, um, Cocaine and benzocaine will both give you the same color test. So that's important why those drugs come to us because we confirm or we not confirm what the officer thinks it is. Okay. And what kind of, what's your, what is your background there uh, as far as education and, and how you landed in that mm -hmm. role with the Sheriff's Office? Um, before I worked um, in um, forensics with the Department of Public Safety, I worked uh, 13 years as a uh, pharmacy technician and then um, I also did two years at Family Court, and then I have 10 years currently with the Forensics Division. I have a uh, Bachelor of Science in Biology, minor in Chemistry, and a Master's in Pharmacogenomics from the Manchester School of Pharmacy. And you may have said this, and I apologize yes. for saying it again, but how long have you been in your current role with the Sheriff's Office? I've um, worked for um, Greenwood County Department of Public Safety. Uh, we're separate from the Sheriff's Office. Oh, see, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. Um, yeah, we have, um, I've been there for 10 years, and before that I worked two years in uh, family court. Okay, and in your current position, is it fair to say it primarily consists of you processing and analyzing these substances that are submitted to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Suspected control substances. And approximately how many cases a month do you process? I would say in a year, I'll do over 10,000 cases. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this time the state would move to qualify Ms. McCall as an expert in drug analysis. Thanks, Counsel. Uh, I've got no objection. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the court will find her qualified pursuant to the agreement of the parties. Drug analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, an expert witness uh, is a person, or normally a person cannot give an opinion, but an expert witness is allowed to. And so when a, t a person testifies, normally they must testify as to either what they saw, they heard, or sensed by smell. However, we do have an exception when someone is qualified because of education or experience and they are permitted to give their opinion in certain areas the court qualifies, <coughs> in, in, in which the court qualifies them. And this witness will be qualified in the area of drug analysis to give an opinion testimony in the area. However, that does not mean that you must accept the opinion, but it is evidence for you to use in any way you see fit and give it the weight and credibility that you believe is appropriate. Please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. McCall, are you involved, uh, how are you involved in, in the present case? Um, well, I don't really read the background on all the cases that we get because we get so many in. Um, currently, our backlog is seven months behind. So um, how I got, I got a subpoena. <laughs> and then I had a pretrial meeting with the solicitors, and that is how I became involved, that this was going to be going to court. Okay. I, let me get more specific. Um, were, you, were, were you charged with processing any substances as it relates to this case? I was involved with uh, this case because uh, the officer requested it to be analyzed because he, I'm assuming on, at scene, he thought it was a controlled substance, so he went to property and evidence, put the evidence there, and put a lab request with it. And then I go down to property and evidence and I say, can I have some drugs? And they hand me uh, sometimes 60 cases of drugs, and I have to go through every single one of them and analyze them. And then I write a report, and then the report goes out to uh, the different parties that are involved in the case. Okay. 
If I, if I showed you a specific item, would you be able to confirm whether or not you, you conducted any testing on it for, for this case? Yes, because when I receive my stuff, I make sure it's sealed by the officer. And if it's not, it goes back down to property and evidence because you want to make sure your evidence is sealed because that means that somebody could have tampered with it. So if it was open, I take it back down to property and I say, I'm not working this item. You need to get the officer to fix this. So when it gets fixed, I will go back down there and I will get the item and I'll come back to the lab and I'll do a chemical test. Uh, that gives me an idea of what I'm looking at, and then I do two confirmatory tests, which is an FTIR and a GCMS analysis. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 9 that's currently in evidence. Showing you State's Exhibit 9 there. Okay. Um, could you confirm whether or not that's the item that you did you did testing for specifically for this case? Okay. Am I should I leave it down here? Am I allowed to bring it out? You can. Okay. And okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is my item. How do you know that? I know that because I have a date when I worked it, and then there are my initials. And then here's the date when I opened the officer's bag that he sealed it in. And then after I weighed it, here is the weight of the item and then the item. So my initialing is all over this bag. Okay. Did you create a report uh, that indicated your findings as to what that substance was? I did. Okay. And what did you determine that substance to be? And, Your Honor, I would object uh, from the standpoint uh, Rule 901 for the purpose of authentication of the exhibit. The state has to establish from beginning to end because it's fungible who handled it, what they did with it. Um, the probative value of her opinion as it relates to the nature of that substance uh, is nil because there's been no chain of custody established, no full chain of custody established as to what happened from the time it was seized until the time this witness tested it. So with that, we would, we would object pursuant to 403. And I would overrule, um, and your objection is noted. Thank you. Uh, I can ask the question again. Yes, sir. Um, what were the results of any testing you conducted on, on uh, State's Exhibit 9? So after the test is, an after we analyze the substance, I create a report and it goes through peer review, which is that one of my peers have to look at my results and we have to agree that we both agree that this substance is what it is. So when he has a state exhibit. I have an item of JS4, and it was um, described as a bag containing powder substance when I received it. But when I work my cases, I take everything out of the bag because weight is very important when you're looking at charges for individuals. So I did create a report, and here it is. Okay. <laughs> and what did you determine? Uh, did you determine that that item is a controlled substance? I did determine that this item is a controlled substance, yes. And what, what controlled substance? Uh, cocaine, um, 4.97 grams. Okay. Um, can you speak a little bit, and I realize, you know, extremely complex, but, and you spoke about it a little bit, but what type of testing you do um, to break down that finding? Yes, yeah, so at first I do a chemical spot test, like I said, like you watch on the shows, just to give you an idea. You get a color change, you're like, okay, like blue, maybe benzocaine, cocaine, procaine. So in this instant, I, I got this bag containing powder substance, took it out of the bag, weighed it, that 4.97 grams is the net weight, not the gross weight. Then after that, I ran it on an FTIR, and that basically puts light through the drug so I can vibrate so then you can see it. But the problem in this case is that the FTIR, FTIR is only good for pure substances. It's not good with cutters. So sometimes when people sell drugs, they like to bulk up <coughs> what they have, so they put other things in it is um, say they might put procaine. They might be procaine, cocaine, and benzocaine in there, but I'm looking for that cocaine. FTR, I cannot see it. So I have to take it to another instrument called the GCMS, gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, and it will separate out each individual ones. So if you go to your house and you take five different pills and you crush them all up and it's a white substance and that comes to me, I can tell you everything that you put in there. Okay. It, so I know you, you spoke to it earlier, but... How many times, ballpark, have you analyzed cocaine specifically in your current role? Oh my goodness. Um, I've been working 10 years, 
and we do over 10,000 cases. I would say um, in Greenville, methamphetamines, number one, cocaine and fentanyl. Cocaine's probably still come, no, fentanyl's probably coming in at number two, and uh, cocaine's probably coming in at number three. So not as often as um, it has been in the past. It's just you drug trends of what people are doing. Safe to say hundreds of times? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. What would you say as to the quality of the cocaine, uh, the state's exhibit nine in, in this particular case? Well, I can say after the analysis, it did have cutters in it. So um, usually when we use, co do, usually when we analyze cocaine or cocaine ba base, which is crack, we can use the FTIR because it's usually a pure substance. But in this case, I couldn't see that backbone of the drug. So I had to take it to the GCMS. So it did, did have other substances in it. So the, I can't tell you a number on purity, but I can tell you that there were other substances in it. At least to the extent that you had to do subsequent testing. I had to do a dis subsequent test, yes. I have no further questions for you. Thank right, you. Thank you. Cross-examination. You worked in the family court? Yes, sir. What did you do in the family court? I took payments and I translated in the courtroom. Okay. Uh, people picked up on bench warrants for uh, child support. You translated, do you speak another language? Yes, sir. What language do you speak? Spanish. All right. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Um, so, uh, just a few questions. Yes, sir. Um, you said that you, um, you roughly process or handle 10,000 cases a year. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, sir. It's a lot of cases. It is. We have a quota we have to make every month. Okay. What's that quota? A hundred. Wow, you're way above that. Um, so, and you don't work seven days a week, do you? No, I work Monday through Friday. Okay. Um, just kind of interesting. At 10,000 cases a year, would it surprise you if you worked every single day of the year, you would on average test 27.3 cases a day? Yeah. There's sometimes there's single item cases, and you're talking about an eight hour day. So we set up a whole run. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot of samples to test. It is. Okay. One second. Yes, sir. I don't have anything else. Okay, anything else from the state? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. You may step down. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Excuse me, please. No objection. Your Honor, at this time, uh, the state would call uh, Milagros Maricalo.